I'm with John here. Hey, John, do you mind just uh, telling the audience like who you are, what your company is? Uh, my name is John Ward, and I'm the CEO of Turnstone Capital, and we are a real estate apartment investment group. There are seven of us in the company. The company's headquarters is in El Segundo, California, and we have apartment investments in California, in Arizona, in Colorado, and in Texas. Right now, we have just slightly under 3,000 doors and 3,000 units and that's about 380 million AUM and it's all workforce housing value-add apartments that's all we do guys. Hey John you mind telling us how did you get started in this like, where did you come from right before real estate before investments like what were you doing back then? So I'm 62 and be, before real estate and before real estate investments was 1979. So we're going to have to go back a long way. Good. But I had graduated out of high school and was selling sandwiches and playing volleyball and doing whatever. And I met a gentleman who at the time was 24 and uh, driving a big red Mercedes with a phone in the car. And in 79, there was maybe three people in California with phones. Red Mercedes phone. Yeah, okay. there, was, there was him and Ronald Reagan basically wow. with phones in the car. So what does the guy do? And he was a loan officer. So he worked for a mortgage banking company mm -hmm. and he would go to real estate agents and sell his services to solicit loans, like to do yeah. home loans. Yeah. And I went up to him and I said, hey, train me to do this business. And I was, uh, I am still very competitive. And so where the company trained me, they said, you want to call on 20 real estate offices a day and see 100 real estate agents a day and ask everybody for a loan. Mm -hmm. I would do 30 or 40. I would just start at 7 in the morning and finish at 7 at night. And within about two years, I was a top producer in the company. So you work for a lender? I worked for a lender. Okay. And, I, and we were doing loans, so my business was go talk to real estate agents. When they sold a home to somebody, they would you? refer me to do the loan. Right. Right. So I'm busy talking to all the real estate agents in Los Angeles, mostly central Los Angeles. And in about the mid 80s, we started doing some flips. Okay. okay. We as in yourself me and, and some uh, another gentleman who I did loans with. Okay. Okay. So the agents back then we were buying homes for thirty, forty thousand dollars. We put twenty thousand into it yeah. and we sell it for hundred and ten. And we said this is great. So we had our loan income and we were doing flip income. And then fast forward to about eighty seven ish. We formed a company, I know, 87, long right. time ago. We formed a company mm -hmm. to just do flips. Okay. Started buying a bunch of flips and we... What happened to the loans? I, I was doing loans at the same Still. time. Okay. Right? And we brought in a partner and we were doing flips all over uh, LA, South Central LA, mm -hmm. and, um, and still doing loans. And so two of us who were doing loans were fronting the money to buy the flips. Then we were doing, you know, three, four a month all the way. And then in the mid 90s, hard money became really easy to get. You had good credit, you had a few bucks. Do you remember what the interest rate was? 12. 12% 12 and four points. And so we formed a company at the time, and it was really supposed to be a flipping company, but an interesting thing happened. With my uh, financial background, I was looking at the MLS, and I saw two properties on the same block right near USC. Not the best area, but a good area for investment. And each one was a boarded up property. Each one was about 4,000 square feet, but one was four units and one was five units. But the five unit was asking about 80,000 less price. Same square footage, same condition. And all of a sudden my finance brain clicked in and I realized the four unit is supported by low down payment FHA VA financing. And the five unit is commercial 
debt coverage ratio, 25, 30% down, hard to get a loan on a board up, like a whole different financing. So we started buying all over LA, five, six, seven, eight units, all board up properties. We would renovate the property and we would convert it down to four units by permit. So you would take, say, a six unit, say six one bedrooms, combine yeah, two yeah. of those units, yeah. so now you have two ones and two yeah. fours. All right? So Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac can come in. Yeah, now yeah. I can sell them. So, yeah. so we would always have one unit that was an owner's unit, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then the, the people would buy them with 3% down FHA mm -hmm. loans. Mm -hmm. They'd live in one unit, they'd rent out the other unit so they could get help qualifying. Mm -hmm. I had a couple of bucks from our loan business, and we went from literally like two or three a month to, we had 60 deals going, yeah. 70 deals going. In what span of time? Within six months. And, you know, to kind of explain to the audience what John did, Essentially, he would take commercial units, reduce the number of units so that it becomes financeable by a regular person who cannot get a, or who does not want a commercial loan. That's for correct. Any man, for any max. So this way, the units that John obtained are harder to get, and then he would dumb it down to a product that anybody can purchase. This way, a lot more people had access Very to true. it and then more price. People yeah. can bid on the price. So this way you went from how many units to 60 units? Well, we, we were doing three or four a month and all of a sudden we went up and within six months we had 50, 60 projects going. So yeah. what was interesting about this is we didn't realize it, but we're really property managers. So mm -hmm. let's say you have 50 five unit buildings. Yeah. That's a lot of units, right? Correct. So we're evicting and renovating and managing and leasing and yeah. then selling. And then at that point, somebody came to me and they said, hey, there's a 16 unit in Long Beach that's, you know, gang infested, bank REO, why don't you buy it? And we bought that and we did the same thing we were doing for these other properties, renovate the whole property and lease it up. But all of a sudden we realized, wait a minute, this is passive income, it's coming in every yeah, month. Yeah. So the light bulb went off in our head, don't sell everything try to generate the passive income. Yeah. So now we had two businesses going. One was doing these flips that we were selling to generate money to invest into our partners. And that was in about 98, 99. And from 98 through 2003, we ended up buying about 40 apartment buildings in LA and Long Beach, renovating, managing, all of that. Value add, all value add. All companies. value add. And by the way, a few of them we got regular bank loans 25% down. Most we were buying with hard money loans, starting out at that 12% at yeah, four points, four. and then eventually went down to maybe 11 and two or three, but it was expensive money. Yeah. And then we would refinance after we had stabilized the property. Mm -hmm. So then in 2003, we sold three, believe it or not, mm -hmm. three apartments in Long Beach at 75,000 a unit. like. 13 and 15 units. Mm -hmm. And we bought a building in Houston, 460 units, where we took that money and we exchanged down payment. Yeah. And we did the same thing in Houston. It was 60% occupied. Mm -hmm. We took it up to 98% occupied and mm -hmm. sold it in 2005. And then I bought another 240 unit in Houston, mm -hmm. which I still own, yeah. still on that property. It's a cash cow, I love it. So. Then we had the Lehman recession. And for those of you who don't remember, that was the, what, the second great recession that they called it, not a depression, but it really put the world on its, on its axis. And we came out of that, and if I had had, you know, back then my investors were white knuckling, you know, they saw the stock market go from yeah. 20 down to six, yeah. Everybody was, and they know, were freaking yeah. out. Mm -hmm. and, and I looked and I said, all these single families, this is the greatest investment, and I couldn't get anybody to invest. And then I heard that there were managers at Colony Capital on their computer buying on the MLS. Colony Capital is, is still a large world hedge fund, and they've now merged with Blackstone and they end up having 85,000 homes. So we were set up perfectly, and we had a partnership with Colony Capital and with Tricon Capital, too, that end up merging with Blackstone. And we bought 60 million in single families in LA. Yeah. Bought them. Was that portfolios? Just, like, yeah. just single properties. We were at the one, 
Courthouse oh, Steps, wow. REO. It was really yeah, the funnest yeah. time in the world because we co-invested our own money and then they would put three million bucks in my bank and then they said, go spend it as long as you can get a six cap, buy right. anything you want. Wow. And it was that must really, be fun. Yeah. It was really fun. Yeah. It was like choppy for kids, yeah. right? So <laughs> then California eventually got where there was no six caps left, right? The prices went up. And we looked around California and we said that there is a, a, a little bit of, of off kilter where large investors don't want to look at small apartments. And we can outperform mom and pa's. So we were putting cash offers on eight to 30 unit properties. And from 2014 to 2019. That was like another niche that you found Another about, niche, right? yeah. On this one, we could put in offers and beat anybody who was buying that property. Mm -hmm. We ended up buying 50 apartment buildings between 2014 and 2019. In fact, in 2017, we were the number two purchaser, according to CoStar, in all of LA and Orange County. We bought 17 apartment buildings in one year, right? So we're doing our value add, and we always knew we wanted to go out of California. And in 2019, we bought 1,150 units in Houston, Good. Lubbock, and Phoenix. Had a little slowdown in 2020, go yeah. figure, Everyone, right? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> And then since then, we've been specializing in smaller, like 20 to 80 unit properties, mm -hmm. where kind of the institutions still don't want them, but smaller groups can buy them. Mm -hmm. And we're in the Denver area, all up and down the Denver corridor, mm -hmm. and Phoenix and Tucson, and we're not buying anymore in California. Wow. And that's the story. Never went to college, just, you know, school of hard knocks. <laughs> Yeah, and where do you foresee your company going? Because from your story, you find these niches and you're able to execute on them, really take advantage of them. Now, moving forward, are you going to stay in that like 2080 uh, unit apartment? One of the way a niche works for me is you find an inefficiency. Mm -hmm. So you find something that you can create value on that other people either don't see the value or don't want to waste their time for that. So institutions don't want it. Yeah, they're yeah, like, it's yeah. too small for us. So the group that was on the panel today, the Rice 48, right? You yeah, saw the yeah. young man from Rice 48. Yeah. And I think they're up to six, 8,000 units in, in three years. They've gone crazy. That's and bad. they were my competition in Phoenix and Tucson. But they got to the point where they couldn't buy a building less than 100 units because it just took right. the same amount of time to buy two or 300 units. Right. It wasn't worth it for them. They have a big overhead, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So I can still go buy that 80, 70, 80, 60, 100 unit building. Mm -hmm. I can react super fast. Mm -hmm. I can evaluate it fast. Mm -hmm. And there's a little bit more value in that. I can get a higher return on cost yeah. on that smaller building because less people are chasing it. And there's the mom and pa's that can't compete with me because I have a slight looking, a slight, almost an institutional look. Yeah. But there's the institutions that can't compete with me because they can't waste their time on a 50 unit building, right? So I can find and pick off a few. Will there be other opportunities? There probably will be, but you don't know it until you see it, right? Until it, until right. it hits you. So it's hard to say, I'll be going into mobile homes. Right. Because that's the next, you don't know what the next niche that you find. But I try to find niches that other people don't, and where I can create value and other people don't see the value. Make sense? Yeah. When you say you can react super fast, you have, you said seven partners, correct? So seven all... employees told me. Seven people in my company. Oh, interesting. Yeah. There's me, I have a junior partner, mm -hmm. and I have an acquisition guy that's all he does is acquisition. Mm -hmm. And I have an asset manager. All she does is asset and effectuate our business yeah. plan. We have a person who goes like eyes and ears out there and two bookkeepers. Lean and mean. Lean <laughs> and nice. Yeah. So, you know, I'll give you an example. Yeah. There's a three property portfolio mm -hmm. that is off market that they were gonna to take to market next week. The agent likes us because we perform and we always close, we don't retrade, yeah. and we always close our deals so he can rely. When he goes to the seller and says, accept this offer, right. this is he the guy. knows we're gonna make them look good, yeah. right? We're not gonna retrade and be, we're not jerks. Comes with, yeah. So he brings in, he goes, I can get this done at this price. And we looked at it and said, this price works. Right? Even in this market, right? Yeah. It's a good high stabilized return on cost. Mm -hmm. 
We went back and forth. My acquisitions guy, the next day, was on a flight to Tucson. Flew out to Tucson. Our management company met them with contractors. We looked at the roofs. We looked at the systems. We looked at the underground. We looked at the plumbing. We did a bid for every single thing on the whole property. And that was Thursday. And on Monday of this week, I had all my bids and I put in my LOI. And when we were on the panel together, I'm sitting there right next to you. I looked out in the crowd and the agent's sitting there. He goes like this, I got my LOI got it. accepted. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're looking at crime, you're looking at rent comps, you're looking at sale comps, you're looking at the rehab, you're looking at the financing, you're looking, can you raise the money? I mean, there's a lot of factors that go in yeah. and if we can turn that around in 24 to 48 hours, we're going to get deals that yeah. other people won't get. I think it's so important that you're able to react and act so, so quickly. You need to build a resume you need to you hook up with somebody like Nan or somebody like John or somebody where you can add some value to the process and you can be associated with them and co-sponsor a deal. Even if co-sponsor means 1% to you, 99% to them, it doesn't matter. You were working, you're building sweat equity, and you build your resume. Now you put out a deal. I just did this. No one knows whether you're 1%, 10%, 30%. You were a sponsor on this. You're in all the paperwork you do. You went start to finish. You make a few dollars, get paid for your time, do another deal. Give it all to the person. Get your name on it. Now you're building your schedule of real estate. You're building your experience. You're building your assets. You're building all of this and you're building your knowledge. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, John, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Uh, My pleasure. Hope you guys got a lot out of this. Uh, see you next time. I'm gonna see you in LA, right? Yeah, see you in LA. Okay, just talking with you. Yeah, yeah.